evening, good evening, and welcome to this week's Dream Whiskies live here on Facebook. What's the date today? It's the 5th, 5th of August. Can you even believe that this much time has passed since we went into lockdown? 5th of August uh, is our 27th week of what is this essential new series that we're running for Dream Whiskies Live. And we have quite a lot of stuff up this evening, including, of course, uh, my guest uh, for the second week in a row, Cheryl, who's got her phone watching this on her phone with the volume on, just to create some feedback for you, just in case there's some <laughs> feedback. So hopefully you've got loads of you joining us tonight. Tonight is, of course, the second week of our viewers' cocktail competition. More on that in a second. Uh, Kieran, hi, how are you doing? Looks like you're first up this evening. Uh, what else have we got for you? As ever, we've got the results of our competitions. So I'll give you those results just in a second. We've got our Whiskey Geek of the Week competition as ever. And the, the questions this week come from Kaz, Kaz Bridges, who won last week and has done the questions for us this week. Plus, of course, we have a spot prize giveaway, various other things. But very excited about our second round of the viewers' cocktail competition. So as you know, last week... We had the first three. The winner was Dave Chilton, so he's gone into the final. Uh, Cheryl was here, obviously, judging, and, and you requested that she came back to be a judge again this week, which, of course, is why she is back. Just let's see who's with us, as well as Kieran. Hi, everybody. Uh, Michael Nolan. Hi, yes. Hi from our judge. <laughs> Gary, how are you doing? Good evening. Paul and Cheryl made it this week. Johnny Walker Black on the go. God, you've even got there before me, Gary. I've got, let me tell you what I've got. What have you got on the go? I've got a rum and coke. Rum and coke. My favourite. Just what you want at Dream Whiskey's Live, don't you? Uh, I've got this uh, Tullamore Dew 12 year old sherry cask edition because we've got a couple of cocktails in tonight that use Irish whiskey, so I thought we'd have that. Barry, as ever, good to see you're not here. Uh, and uh, Michael picking up and hi, Cheryl, of course. Good. So uh, glad that you're joining us. Richie Ward. It's been a while, but you're back. And Richie, I think you'll be pleased that you're back tonight as well. We've got our cocktail competition on the go. Carl, how are you? Nice to see you. All right. First of all, let's all have a bit of a toast. Cheers, Cheers to everyone. Week 27. Uh, I got my Tullamore Jew. We know that there's a Johnny Walker Black being drunk. What else have you got? Uh, Kieran got a Mortlax 16. That's which is a nice. it is it's a nice little drop that one would you prefer that instead of your rum and coke no no no, no rum and coke no. for cheryl uh cat jam uh hi all on the glen Fiddick. good nice set which one have you got which one are you on uh i'm assuming i'm just going to assume you're on the 12 but uh, let us know if it's something other than the 12 as well so uh let me tell you before we do anything but i didn't even drink this did i here cheers mm. before we do anything let me tell you whose cocktails are in play this evening. Just in case you haven't seen it on the email or you haven't seen it on our Facebook page. Tonight we have Cat Jam, who is on the Glen Finnick. Uh, so good. Uh, Gary Cummins, who is saying cheers to everyone there. Uh, we've got you up tonight. And, uh, and Jeff Canis, who I saw a message earlier to say that, sadly... Uh, he's working, uh, and I think he's not going to be watching this oh, until he's, he's no. Oh, he's going to watch it on record. Okay. So hi, Jeff. Sorry you're not watching it live, okay. but um, uh, good luck in the cocktail competition. Uh, who else we got here? Ed Hall, Abalawa 12. Loving that. Bob Brown. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. All right. Um, I'm going to tell you the names of the cocktails. Remember the rules of this. I will make three cocktails, uh, one from each of those people submitted. Very nice indeed. I'm not telling Cheryl whose cocktail is who, just not that there's going to be any kind of favouritism, but you know, just so there's no subliminal influence. By the end of this evening's broadcast, she will have picked the winner out of those three, and that one will go through to our grand final, where it will be matched up against last week's winner, Dave Chilton. And by the way, next week's, which is our last round uh, before our final, where we have Luca. Uh, who has submitted a recipe, Charlie Oates, who has submitted a recipe as well, and one other person. So uh, that will be next week. This week, Gary, Cat, and Jeff. And um, yes, so before we get into that... Dog. Dog. We've got a dog. Right, so look, one of the problems with having <laughs> Cheryl sitting here uh, and judging the competition is that when our dogs start barking at stuff, um, she's here and not trying to keep them quiet somewhere else. 
Uh, that one barking, if you can hear in the background, is a dog called Roxy. You've all seen Alfie in the past. Uh, that's Roxy. Uh, Cat Jam, 12-year-old lymphatic. Very nice. Bob, you've got a Glen Goyne 10. I I'm liking all of these. But Bruce, you're there. You're here, but you're not here because you're working. Now, I saw your post. Um, well, you got still having a cherry juice and vanilla enhanced Godfather anyhow. Listen, <laughs> got to tell you, that was a great drink. You know, last week it was really touch and go between you. Here's Alfie. Many of you know Alfie. Kaz, you're in. Hi. How you doing? I've told everyone that you are our quiz master tonight. So all the questions coming from, from Kaz. Uh, in fact, I think what we will do is we will start with, right now, the first round of our Whiskey Geek of the Week. So we're going to start our Whiskey Geek of the Week now. So if you've got a pen, stroke pencil and some paper, you can write down the questions. Uh, and then we will go okay. into our first cocktail of this evening, which is a cocktail by one of our contestants called the Ring of Cherry. The Ring of Cherry. So, <coughs> whoa, dogs are all singing <laughs> tonight. Enough. Okay, Cheryl might be up and down like, like uh, well, her dad used to say up and down like a barmaid's knickers, but I'm sure that's politically incorrect and out of date right now. So just blaming her dad for saying this. Uh, here we go. Uh, Questions one, two, and three for our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz for this week. Uh, remember, set by Kaz. So again, thank you very much, Kaz. So as with every week, the first round are all anagrams. I'm going to give you an anagram. You've got to unscramble the letters and make up the name of a whiskey or whiskey distillery. Okay, so a whiskey or a whiskey distillery. So number one, uh, the, uh, the number one, uh, anagram number one is Manila Wives. Manila Wives, that's spelt M-A-N-I-L-L-A, -L -L and then Wives, W-I-V-E-S. So number one is Manila Wives. Remember, Cheryl will post these up in the comments once I've given them. So if you haven't written them down, you'll be able to go back to the comments and pick them up. Number two, anagram number two. Remember, you're looking for either a whiskey or a whiskey distillery. So this is, I love this one by the way, Kaz. <laughs> it's got to be the best one so far. Cafe of Kinky. Cafe of Kinky. So that's Cafe, C-A-F-E, and then of, O-F, and uh, Kinky, K-I-N-K-Y. Cafe of Kinky. What whiskey or whiskey distillery is that? Loving that one. Uh, and then number three, number three, remember you've got the whole of this broadcast to work these out, so don't feel like you've got to crack them right now. Number three is Old Sherry Ale. Old Sherry Ale. So Old, O-L-D, Sherry is S-H-E-R-R-Y, -R and then Ale is A-L-E. Cheryl's going to pop them up in the comments any second now. Uh, so you'll be able to go back to them. But that's questions one, two, and three. And now it is time to do the first cocktail of this evening, this one being the first in our round two of uh, our viewers' cocktail competition. This is, I'm quite, I am quite like this one, actually. You don't know what is coming your way. I've got no idea at all. And what it's I like exciting. about this, it is exciting. And, and I, th I think it's always exciting when it's a complete blank surprise. What I like about this is that this is a relatively simple and straightforward recipe. So last week, we had three recipes that, on the whole, were all fairly complex. Uh, we have a complex one tonight, but we have two fairly straightforward ones. And sometimes the straightforward ones can be the best ones. Yeah. Simplicity. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, well, let's find out. Okay, so I've got the ingredients from this person. What they didn't give me was how it should be served. So I've, I've just looked at it and assumed that the best way to serve this is going to be straight up in a martini glass. So the first thing that we're looking at is some Irish whiskey, and that's why I've got our Tullamore Dew on the go. And it's given this to me in parts, like ratio, so one and a half parts to one part to half a part. So I'm going to break that back out into actual measures. So I'm going to put 30 ml of our whiskey into here. So if this is our one and a half parts, there's 30 ml of our whiskey. I do like that jigger. That's really cool. This jigger? Mm. It's really a nice, nice jigger. Shall I show them close yeah, up? Yeah, no, it's really nice. Can you see this? Can you see where? So it's, it's, it's actually called the, uh, the tattoo jigger. So it's, it's got engravings on it. 
of uh, various traditional tattoos. But I like this one actually. Yeah. It's sort of my favourite one. It's like got, got the old fashioned sailor Jerry. Yeah. Girl on it yeah, it's well. got that kind of. Oh, it has. It's got her up there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see a, a kind of uh, nod to the sailor Jerry at the top there. Nice. Yeah. Good. What's Michael saying to us? Hi, Bruce. Oh. Uh. <laughs> he's he's doing They're some. Chatting. I'm just going to let them chat. Okay. So that was ingredient number one. So that was uh, three parts essentially, or one and a half parts. Now, one part is Bailey's Irish Cream. So I guess the Bailey's Irish Cream to go with the, uh, the Irish whiskey. And that also makes sense. So I'm going to add that. There's the Bailey's. Oh, I can see what um, Richard is asking. Oh, can you? He's what? asking about the cherry juice. Oh. Because uh, we used an Asda one last week. We, we did. We did. And our cherry yeah. juice was a kind of a, a cherry hybrid, really. So it wasn't just cherry juice. As with a lot of juices, they tend to pack them out with other juices in there. So it was mostly cherry juice, the one that we used. Uh, but I think there was a bit of apple in there as well, which they do that quite a lot. I think so. Uh, what's this? We need a doggy cocktail for Alfie. <laughs> 50 beef, beef broth, 10 more bourbon, egg white, uh, shake and a bone for a swizzle. Oh, Sounds good. It. He Sounds good. Like... love it. Yay, Nikki's here. <laughs> Nikki's here. Hi, Bit Nikki. late, but here. Hey, Nikki, we're already into the first cocktail of this Thanks evening. Uh, this yeah. is, well, I'm not telling you who it's by because this is a blind tasting for Cheryl. So currently we've got our Irish whiskey, we've got our Baileys, and now, and I think this was influenced actually by, um, by Cheryl herself, because you all know that she likes cherry. So quite a few of you put cherry into your recipes. So, and this is half a pot. Uh, in comparison to the one and the one and a half that we had before of oh, a cherry yeah. with you. Well, they're all barking tonight. I think I need to shut the windows. Okay, so Cheryl's yeah. going to disappear for a second and try and get our dogs to quieten down. We've been doing these broadcasts on and off for, what, three years? And I think this is the most mayhem we have had with our dogs in that time. I think it's because it's summer. It's summer. Uh, they can see people walking past outside, they're barking at everything that they can, uh, but it lets you know that this is entirely live. They say don't work with children and animals, so we got rid of all of our children, but we're left with all of our animals. Okay, so we've got those three ingredients, and that's it, it's those three ingredients. I'm going to take a scoop of ice. By the way, just so that you know, for some reason, Facebook tonight, hopefully you've got the same size uh, uh, window that you normally have but for me we normally have a big screen and we can see what we're doing and for some reason there's this tiny little icon so I actually can't see that everything's in line on the screen very well at all but I'm, I'm pretty sure you let me know if it's not so I'm going to put all these ingredients into here and one of the things about putting in a creamy uh, drink with cherry is that it can congeal as well so the shaking I'm hoping is going congeal to break that up curdle. say that again congeal or curdle uh, well, a bit of both, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to shake that up. See how we do it? Yeah, it's breaking down. All right. Okay. I don't believe it. So our dogs are just barking at everything. It's one of those nights. Can you even hear anything that we're saying? So here we go. Strain into the martini. I'm not sure if this is what you want. By the way, don't answer me because if this is your cocktail and you know it's your cocktail, we don't want you revealing that to Cheryl just yet. Uh, and then you said you reckon a cherry for garnish. So what I'm going to do I'm loving the sound is I'm going to take a cherry out of this jar like so. And uh, because that is a thin drink, I'm going to have to pop this on the side. So I'm just cutting... Can't you stick it on a stick for me? I could do, but I thought I'd just do this. You think I should put it on a stick? Is it going to float? No, I'm going to pop it on there. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's gone in the drink. <laughs> right. right. So A, it doesn't go on the side, B, it doesn't float. Okay, I'm going to put that there and you can fish that <laughs> out. But anyway, it. okay, that's a first taste. Thank first you. taste. So this is drink number one. This is called, let me just check I get the name right. Uh, make sure that we got this right. Uh, pretty sure it's called the Ring of Cherry. Uh, yeah, the Ring of Cherry by one of our three people. So you can't try this. No, I can't try this. I can't try this. I can't drink creamy things unless it's special cream. Give them a cocktail, says Nikki. This is nice. <laughs> I'm thinking that maybe we should just have a bowl of whiskey on the I'm, floor and I'm let them drink themselves idea. to sleep. Yeah. Uh, mm. What is this? Right, I'm going to dig out the cherry now. Okay. 
Uh, Dave Chilton having the same problem with their dogs. Are my dogs setting your dogs off, Dave? What do you think? Of this I really drink? like it. So, Ring yes. of Cherry at the moment, I getting can, a thumbs I can up. Drink this one happily. Okay. Straight after dinner. If you had to, um, if you had to give that uh, like a random score out of ten, what would you say? Um, that's awkward, really. It's awkward, yeah. yeah no, um, I really like it. All right, so you're not going to give it a score out of ten. No. Okay. But I will. But you, you're not going to, but you're going to I'm do it. I'm not going to, but I will. All right, so. Because you asked me. All right, then. I, I reckon it's a nine and a half out of ten. It's a good one. Wow. It's very nice. Is that your drink? Only one of you, well, I was going to say only one of you are nodding yes. The rest of you would be shaking your head no. Uh, Nikki's saying it looks yummy. It is yummy. Cheryl's it's saying it's yummy. Nikki, we need you over here now. Um, Anyway, you can, you can just, just get on the plane, just get yeah. here now. Can you get here before the end of the broadcast? Save it for you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so that's uh, cocktail number one for our competition and, and started with a, a really good, uh, a, a really hard score, actually. Yeah, but you see, that's not against the others. No, that's just that's the, just it's because you'll mark them relative to one another. Yes. And you won't actually give away, and uh, we know how this is going to work. Yes. Okay, uh, Bruce, another winner. Actually, so far, they've all been amazing, really, last week and this week. Uh, Ed Hall looks nice. Ed Hall, you're not... Ed, is it Ed Hall or Eddie Hall? Who, who's the, the world's strongest man? Is that you, by the way? And is that his name, Ed Hall? Uh, Mickey, uh, laugh out loud. Is that about you coming over? <laughs> all right, everybody, uh, we're going to go into the second round of our Whiskey Geek uh, quiz. So nice these shoes. are questions four, five, and six. And uh, question number four, question number four, here we go. So which distillery based in Tasmania celebrated 25 years since it was established uh, uh, last year in 2019? So it's essentially celebrated its 25th anniversary last year in 2019. Which distillery and it's based in Tasmania? Uh, there you go. All right, so Tasmania. That should give you some kind of clue, I reckon, to, to which one it is. Is it called the Devil's Whiskey? Well, I, because, because it's in Tasmania. Like, Tasmanian Devil. Yeah, creepy, Okay, I see it? where you're going with that. <laughs> it's not that. It's a good job it's not that, isn't <laughs> it, really? It's a good job, Adam, because you have just given them the answer. I just the answer. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about now, it. Now, have another drink. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't taken long. So our judge has only had a couple of sips. She's been running around after the dogs. So it's starting to fall apart very early tonight, we can tell. All right, question number five. Uh, want to know which distillery makes a whiskey called Wild Weasel? So which distillery makes a whiskey called Wild Weasel? I have to be honest, when I saw this question, definitely didn't know the answer myself. Uh, Eddie the Beast Hall. Not me, though. Okay. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. Uh, I think I remember him lifting a, 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 a barrel of whiskey or something. In, uh, amazing, yeah. That's the guy that I thought he was. Okay, um, that was question number five. So which distillery makes a whiskey called Wild Weasel? Just give myself another little bit of wild something here. Uh, it's a shame you can't try that. I know, I know. But I could tell that it was just out of interest. Um, so when I put those ingredients in, you know, the che if you put cherry liqueur, uh, particularly cherry liqueur, it's kind of the worst one, with Baileys and you just pour it in, it does congeal. What did you say? Curdle. Curdle, congeal, yeah, both of those. It sort of goes all gloopy. And actually students often put that into drinks because it's some kind of disgusting thing that they call gorilla snot. It's actually an official cocktail, gorilla snot, but there you go. Uh, but if you shake it up and then it breaks it all down, it all mixes really well. Uh, question six. Question six. So, in which country is that distillery based? So, the last one I said to you, which distillery makes a whiskey called Wild Weasel? And now I want to know what country is that distillery in? Okay. So, question number six. What country is that distillery in? That's I've just posted them. You posted them. Okay. So, questions are up yep. in the comments box. So, he's not with us at the moment. Uh, he told us that he wasn't going to be able to watch live. But Jeff Canis is drink number two for this evening. You've just given it away. Oh, I've given it away. <laughs> I just broke my own rules. 
<laughs> the rules are you're not allowed to say. Ah, I just broke my rules. Right, okay, should we just rewind and I'll just pretend I didn't hear Can that. you pretend? Okay. All right, so Cheryl's got a really short memory. Wow. Jeffrey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm now going to go into the second cocktail for a random, not to be named person that sent it in. Oh, the person that's not here tonight. Uh, who might be here or not. Uh, not entirely oh, sure, would it? Okay, so, so this, this recipe, actually, I'm really quite interested in trying. I haven't tried it out, but it's, it's an old-fashioned cocktail, so it's an old-fashioned, but it's, it's uh, their own take on it, and um, it, it's, it's quite a sort of kind of natty variation. I'm really, really quite interested to give it a go. So, fairly complex, uh, and I have to start with this board because I've got to smoke the glass. Dave Chilton, duh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Dogs, mistakes, what else are we going to get Bruce, Gary, yeah, I oh dear. Yeah, a definite Homer Simpson moment there for me. All right, first things first. So, I am to take uh, some fresh rosemary, fresh rosemary, uh, and those of you that watch know that we grow this because I'm using this quite a lot in cocktails anyway. So oh, some... that reminds me, um, uh, Bruce was telling me uh, a few weeks ago about some lemon basil. Yes. I've, I'm, I've got some growing now. Got lemon basil on the grow, I got, I got, Bruce. I've got some seeds and I'm growing it and it's coming out quite nice. We've got a small bay leaf here as well uh, to add to our rosemary. Then what I've got to do is I've got to take some orange peel. So I'm just going to take my orange. Are you sure that's an orange and not a grapefruit? This is definitely an orange. <laughs> I know that we've got a grapefruit. <laughs> we've got a grapefruit. They do look I very am similar. About you tonight. So uh, I'm going to put those there. And uh, the, um, the person that I didn't mention, uh, who is nothing to do with this drink, said, make a little bonfire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set light to this with a torch. And then I'm going to kind of smoke the glass with these various aromatics. So you've got the orange oil, I get you've got the, the dried bay leaf, and you've got the fresh rosemary. So let's get this just, on the go. We just need a little tent, don't we, to sleep in tonight, and then we'll be all right. We're good. Yeah. All right. And then I've got to leave that good. on the side. Right, so that is going. Apparently, I've got to come back to that midway and give it another little blast. That smells good, though. Yeah. Liking that. Yeah. All right, now we're going to bring our ingredients together in a mixing glass. So we're going to start with bourbon and I've got bourbon on the go here and I just want to check the ratio. Pretty sure uh, we're talking about a 40. Let me just give this another rinse. Pretty sure that we're talking about 40 here. I'm trying to remember the ingredients here. All right, so let's get our bourbon in. Actually, it could have been a 60 now I think about it. So let's get that, a little bit more. Okay. And then the next ingredient is amaro, and amaro is uh, a kind of fruity but bitter Italian aperitif, and, uh, and there are many brands of amaro, and in actual fact there are many products which are under the heading of amari. Now I don't have amaro, but what I do have, which is an amari, uh, is fernabranca, but this is more bitter than the one that this person recommended. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some of this and then I'm just going to sweeten it up with some uh, sweet vermouth. And the vermouth actually is going to get it fairly close to the amaro that was on, uh, on this cell or in this recipe. So let me just do that to take a little bit of sweet vermouth. Have I um, ever told you about the first time I had Fernabranca? No, tell me about it. No, don't just tell me. I'll tell everybody. Okay, tell us yeah. about it. <laughs> so I was, um, I was probably about 11 or 12, I guess. Um, so quite young. Um, and I was on holiday with my parents. Um, and I had a really, really bad stomach. <laughs> and um, my dad, who used to be in the Navy, said, oh, you need some Fernabranca. And um, I had no idea at all what what it was, and I still don't really know much about it today, <laughs> actually. Um, but all I know is that at 11 or 12 years old, going up to the barman and asking for a fern of uh -huh. feeling very grown up. And um, so I had this drink, and the next day, fine, no stomach problems. Shall I tell so you? Why is that? Well, I, it's it's amazing. They're they're almost like medicinal bitters. So here's an interesting thing about Fernabranca. 
And that is that during prohibition in the United States, you could still legally buy products like this. And that's because it wasn't being sold in bars or pubs. It was actually being sold in pharmacies uh-huh. as, as uh, well, to help stomach. It was, it was a kind of a, um, a, a, a relaxant for people with malaria, all sorts of strange things, actually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that... Um, uh, and now here you are. And now here I am. At another bar. At another about bar. to have some more about to have some in a cocktail. Right. So this is 20 cocktail. mil now mm-hmm. of maple syrup. So this is quite a lot of sweetening here from the maple syrup. Then, and this is where it's getting quite complex, two types of additional bitters. So we've got Angostura and one, two, three. He said three dashes. I said he. Could have been the sheep. Ah, oh, I'm really blowing this, aren't I? And then uh, three of the Peixo bitters as well. So one, what, what two, three. Peixo bitters? So this was uh, a different type of bitters uh, produced by Antoine Amade Peixo, uh, who himself was a, a pharmacist. And they are slightly sweeter and very different in terms of their aroma and flavour to Angostura bitters. You find them in drinks like Sazerac and stuff like that. And so then... quite spicy. Uh, well, bitter, really. But it's really aromatic. Loads of aroma. And then we need a couple of spoons of the cherry juice. So we've got the cherry juice from the jar, like so. That's good. Pretty cool drink we got on the go here. Let's just get this back and up. And now what I've got to do is I've got to stir all these ingredients. So if we get some ice into our mixing glass. I'm just going to try it this time. Okay. Well... Trying it on its own. What are you all saying to me here? Avril saying, my favourite, what an old fashioned. Uh, Dave Chilton, lemon basil is great in the garden, it smells fantastic. Looking forward to that. It's not really for drinking straight off a spoon, just to be honest with you. It's like medicines. Oh, oh they, they, they were all pharmacists, the people who produced yeah, these. Bruce, yes, there's even lime basil too, very similar. Didn't grow that this year, last year did. Great in pasta too. Avril, not the Clark maple syrup again. Yeah, sorry about that. But you'll be pleased to know, Avril, that that Clark maple syrup is now empty. So I'll be going and getting a different maple syrup as we go forward. So we've stirred. Now what he said was actually, give this another quick burn. Okay. And then I'm going to put that to the side. And I'm going to get an ice ball. So I got this sort of large ice what ball. Size is that? I know it's a sort of big one. It's got lots of cracks in it, though, so it could fall apart. That's a really very large ball. <laughs> Thank you very much. So now I'm going to drop the ice ball into our heavily smoked glass. Thank you. What is it? It's a very large. It's a very large ball. ball. Thank you. It's we're get... one though. Okay, we're going to strain. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, have another spoon of uh, Peixot bitters. Going to strain our old fashioned. This is called a tabletop old fashioned, actually, uh, according to the author. Not entirely sure, but that was the name that uh, the author of this game. And then finally, we're going to garnish it with three things. So we need a large sprig of rosemary, which I'm going to drop in the side, like so. We need another large bit of orange peel, but not like the burnt one that we had before. There we go, and just spray the oils over the surface. I actually think, let's take it off, I think this is a, a really nice looking drink actually. We've got a lot of comments there. Drop that in. So you, you can read the comments and I'll, and I'll try to drink. Okay, right, hold on, I haven't finished yet, I need to go back to that. So what's this cocktail called? So it's a tabletop old fashioned. Uh, Nikki, I like your little blowtorch thingy, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry guys, most missed of it, missed most of it tonight, celebrating my third wedding. And congratulations, big congratulations. Have a whiskey to celebrate, catch up tomorrow, enjoy it all, and cheers. Steve, many happy uh, returns. You say returns, you don't really, but big congratulations for your third wedding anniversary. If you're still with us, enjoy the whiskey, and if you're not, I guess you'll pick this up tomorrow. Uh, maybe make some of these cocktails. Uh, Nikki, ooh, that's the biggest ice ball I've ever seen. Very big ice Really, Cat Jam uh, crying a little bit with laughter. <laughs> uh, good excuse for me to get one of those uh, butane torches. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the excuse that every pyromaniac wants, is I need that torch because I'm making a cocktail. Uh, and then a cherry, another cherry as well. So I'm just going to, maybe I'll just even balance that in amongst there. Okay, so this traditionally would not be Cheryl's style of drink, this, this kind of sort of hardcore 
um, classic style. But I, I don't know. I think this this might go, especially with the further branker in it. But there you go, a right. tabletop. Let me give it a go. Old fashioned. Let's move these right. out of the way. It's got quite a little, quite a lot of bits coming out there. There's a lot of bits. Little bits. You don't like the bits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's surprisingly smooth. It's it, well, I, for me, it's it's not surprising that it's mm. smooth. Uh, but mm. I just wonder if the flavour profile is for you. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm, I'm surprised that I like it. Let me have a little taste, because like, I can taste this one. Mmm. It's it's almost, oh, that's gorge. It's almost chocolatey. It does have a little yeah. chocolatey note to it. That's really quite nice. fun, isn't it? Um, wow. wow, like that, really like that. Um, I do like that. Rob Ert, hi together, hi back at you. And Nikki, looking forward to watching you taste the bowl, Cheryl. I can't wait to get... No, no, no just, just stop. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> time to send her in to sit with the dogs, I think. My God. Uh, okay. Well, sis, congrats. Uh, you had her at Cherry's. Okay, yes, absolutely. Right, I'll definitely. Take out the okay. cherry. Calm, calm, calm. Here we go. Right, so we've got two of our three cocktails for tonight's competition. I think, actually, I mean, they're, they're really different. So I'm assuming that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a dilemma for you, actually. The biggest problem is, is that I have Nikki encouraging me. Don't, Nikki, don't encourage her. Uh, she is. Whatever you're doing, no encouragement from I'm Nikki. Gonna hear it. Yeah, you well, you can, you, can, you can just imagine what she's saying. Yeah. So Nikki there is, uh, is my sister, as many of you know, because I've mentioned it a number of times. So ladylike, little sippy, 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 <laughs> Cheryl. Oh, God, so I've got my wife here. I've got my sister there. Wow, they're just, between both of us, they just, just behave. That was like sippy, sippy. Shall we ban <laughs> Cheryl from coming on next week? I'm, I don't know. All right, let's get back into our Whiskey Geek of the Week, shall we? Uh, we got question seven. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> love it. <laughs> question seven, eight, and nine. Here we go. So this is back to Kaz's questions. Our winner from last week, and actually our winner from three other weeks as well. Uh, cheers to you once again, Kaz. Mm. So uh, here we go. I want to know which distillery released a series of whiskies that were called Fragments of Scotland, okay? So which distillery released a series of whiskies called Fragments of Scotland? That was question number seven. Question number seven, all right. Who else is talking Let's to us? Shall I try that? Nice. I'm gonna, I might just keep this over here. No, don't. I no? Like that one. Mm. I'll tell you what's really interesting about that is that that sort of Ferner Branco vermouth thing, you, you can't pick it. It's so beautifully blended away. Really liking that drink. Really nice. All right, question number eight. Question number eight, here we go. Uh, uh, which Scotland, oh sorry, which Scotch whiskey region does Alcantosh and Three Wood Whiskey come from? Okay, so which Scotch whiskey region does Alcantosh and come from? That was question number eight. Uh, after question number eight, we got uh, question number nine, obviously, and then we're going to go into the third of our cocktails for this evening. A very different cocktail again for you from another person that's not the person that I might have given away last time. I think I'm with you. All right. Yeah. Question number nine. I'm actually thinking maybe I should just turn this into a weekly, you know, a weekly how fast <laughs> can my wife get drunk? I'm then? not drunk. Are you not? No, I'm, I'm just having fun with you. Okay. I'm not drunk. But don't you think that when someone says I'm not drunk, they're clearly drunk? No, I'm just not. Is that what happens? <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just not. Okay, right. Uh, number nine, you ready? Go, go on. Okay. <laughs> number nine, question number nine. Uh, want to know which whiskey won the world's best single malt I'll put it up now. at this year's World Whiskey Awards? So Cheryl's just put the questions up. Uh, you'll find them in the comments, but which whiskey won the world's best single malt at this year's World Whiskey Awards? That is question nine. So question nine, we are done. We're done. We have three more questions in our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Yep. Uh, but not before we do the third 
in our round two of our viewers cocktail competition. The third surprise. The third complete surprise. Complete surprise, got no idea who it mm -mm. is. Okay. So this one is quite an interesting one as well. Um, I there was no name with it, so I went back to this person and asked them about the name, and I think I got what you meant from that, and I think I've come up with cinnamon delight. I think that's what you said. I do like cinnamon. I know you like cinnamon. So that's a good yeah, start. I like cinnamon. So this one's called a cinnamon delight. I uh, also didn't really say what kind of glass to put it in, so I, I've, I've made a kind of a call on this. So I'm going to put it into this. Your favourite glass. This is my favourite glass that seems it to have been splashed. Let me get another one of my favourite glasses. Okay, so there we are. This is my favourite glass. And this glass is a genuine period glass. So this one we think is about 1950s, don't we? Although the style is potentially 60s, but we think this is 1950s glass. Anyway, I really like this one. It's got a nice little ping, <laughs> ping. to it. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm going to put it over some rocks, but mostly not. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if that's how you, you meant it to be, but, but this is, again, a relatively simple drink. So I'm going to take uh, our shaker. In fact, let's use the glass so that you can all see. So I'm going to take our shaker. Kaz loves cinnamon as well. Oh, Kaz, are you a cinnamon lover? Is that right? Yeah. Did we know that about Kaz? No, I think last week there was something that you used last week that both Kaz and I agreed that we both liked. And I can't remember what that was now. Whiskey? No, not just whiskey. <laughs> no, it was something else. Mm. Come on, Kaz, what was it? What you was remember? it, Kaz? Um, it was one of the ingredients in banana. Was it banana? Oh, it might have been the banana. Been actually, the banana. I, okay. I might have said, "Oh, it's my favourite fruit." So. So this person said uh, 40 ml of whiskey, not peated, uh, and then suggested that they use Jameson. So I don't have any Jamesons on the bar today, but you know that we got this uh, uh, Tullamore juice, so we got another Irish whiskey on the go. So 40 ml of that. There we go. You don't have Jameson's. No, well, I have, but not sort of. It's about 50 years old. Yes, it's, it's not for a cocktail. <laughs> not tonight, anyway. Okay. Waste it on me. <laughs> You're definitely not going to be pouring that down, Cheryl. So 40 ml of our Irish whiskey. We're going for a decent Irish whiskey anyway. So we've got, we've got 12 year old Tullamore juice sherry cask. Very nice whiskey. Very nice, thank you very uh, much. And then uh, 30 ml of Drambuie. So actually, for many people, this in itself is a, is a kind of a sort of classic, um, sort of Godfather style cocktail. So 30 ml of Drambuie. Drambuie, is that got like an orange flavour to it? No, not really. Oh, it's goodness. more of a honeyed flavour. Uh, you might be thinking of Grammanier or something like that, but it's, you know, Scotch whiskey, honey, tiny. They're, they're similar in style, but not so orange. So is it a liqueur? It's a liqueur in the sense that it's very high in sugar. Uh, but it's traditionally much higher in alcohol strength than a liqueur would be. So a liqueur often sits around sort of 20 to 25 percent, but this is right up there with the spirit. It's just like a liqueur spirit in that sense. Now, at this stage, I'm meant to shake these two ingredients together, so let's just go for it. So let's just shake these two. I'm meant to so Avril's just talking there about cinnamon and honey and on porridge, Scottish porridge for your morning after it. Does she know about my amber? I don't know if she does. Avril, we've got something to we show you in a second. About my amber. So, so uh, Cheryl is a big fan of porridge and uh, loves the idea of cinnamon and stuff on it, but, but on special occasions she pours something really cool on it, which I will show you in just a second. I'll get it out from under the bar. But let's just shake this. Let's get on with this cocktail. Uh, remind me when we've done this cocktail to get the amber out and we'll, we'll show don't Avril worry, what that know. is. Uh, here we go. So we're going to give this a shake. All right, so that's shaken up. Oops. Oops. Uh, and I'm thinking this needs to go over some rocks. So I might be wrong with this, but it wasn't entirely clear in the recipe. So I'm going to put some rocks in there. I'm going to bring that up to here. Yeah, this is looking about right. I don't know why I was expecting it to be a lot thicker. But... Well, it would have been thick if we had just poured it in the glass, but I think that's why they suggested that we shake it, okay. because shaking it, I guess, sort of thins it out uh, and chills it a lot as well. Cream. So now I've got to float cream on this. So let's just use the spoon and there we go. 
So you can see the cream on the surface, just sort of sitting at the top. All very nice. There we go. Okay. Cool. And then. Hold on, we're not done yet. No, I know. Oh, it's sort of just sort of running down, isn't it? Yeah, it's so you should down. use nice. you should use a double cream with this. So a double cream will sit better on the top. Uh, the cream that I'm using is is actually it's a lacto-free cream. So I'm I'm I I can't eat lactose, so it means that we have these sort of things in in the house and in the bar. Um, uh, so it doesn't float quite as well. But if you use double cream for this, uh, it will float and it will sit much better. And then a sprinkle of cinnamon. Actually, the, what it said was either cinnamon or chocolate. But I chose cinnamon because I also happen to know that Cheryl loves cinnamon. Certainly, I was going to say much more than chocolate. I, she's more prepared to eat it than chocolate. Uh, doesn't necessarily I love it more than chocolate. Cinnamon chocolate would be nice. And this is called a cinnamon delight. It's really simple. Okay. Uh, and I think, you know, you drink the other thing through the cream. So you, you've, got to, you've got to have a bit of a glug to get it out through the cream. Okay. Uh, but let's see what you think. I'm wondering whether or not a straw might be good because it's going to be really creamy. Yeah, but you need to drink it through the cream. That's the whole point. Uh, specifically said by the person who sent this recipe in. What do you think? Oh. Oh. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> what are you guys nice. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're now on the porridge now. Kaz, I pour bramble whiskey on my porridge in the winter. Wow. When you say bramble whiskey, do you mean, is that your own whiskey uh, that you've infused with uh, locally picked brambles? Is that what you're saying? Um, cat jam, what's going on? A bit of coconut oil in porridge makes it amazingly creamy. Wow. Nikki looks so scrummy. Yeah, that does look it's pretty really scrummy, nice. actually. Uh, Barry, who is not here, says he suddenly fancies some porridge. <laughs> Go and get some, it doesn't matter. You so all this chat anytime. about porridge, right? Let's show them where that stuff is. Okay. So I always have my porridge with um, banana and cinnamon and at Christmas. So we might have shown them this last I don't know if we've shown you this. So forgive us if we've shown you this before. But this is a, a product called Amber by Macallan. Uh, and so for a period uh, about 10 years ago... Well, they, yeah, we went 10 years ago up to Scotland. But they were producing it then, yeah. yeah. So they were producing it at uh, Macallan, um, uh, we think about 10 years ago. They stopped producing it because the demand for their whiskey was getting so high, they couldn't actually... Uh, um, it made no sense to put all the grain or any of the grain towards this when they needed to put it all towards their whiskies. But this is a pecan and uh, maple liqueur based on Macallan whiskey. It is absolutely delicious. The only problem with this is that when we bought it, it was about 40 quid, but because they stopped making it, um, you, you, you just can't buy it anymore. And, and if you do, it's at auction and it's, I don't know, it's, it's about five, six, five, six hundred pounds a bottle. So sorry, <laughs> just shown you that and then realized that it's almost impossible to get, but uh, that's what Madam here does with her Christmas. But oh, she Christmas. keeps it for Christmas because we've only got a tiny bit left now. So, um, so there you go. But if you do find any Macallan Amber anywhere, just, just buy it. pick it up. Pick it's amazing. it up. Absolutely okay. Amazing. This is really nice. You're liking this one. Mm. So at some point, uh, shortly, Cheryl is going to um, decide try. who the winner is. Let me try this. I think there's too much cream on the top though. Oh, I don't. Don't you? No. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's really nice. Glug through the cream. Isn't it funny how sometimes really simple cocktails, you know, on the surface, really simple ones, are actually uh, sometimes you know, the most delicious. It's all about getting the balance, actually. It's really difficult again. So this is what we're going to do. I've got a few things here to do. I've got the last three questions of our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Uh, I'm going to have another chat with Cheryl after that about all three. Then I'm going to give you the answers to Whiskey Geek of the Week. We're going to decide who our Whiskey Geek is of this week. And then we're going to come back and Cheryl is going to announce the winner of this week's cocktail competition to go into the final against Dave Chilton's cocktail from last week. Uh, what else is being said here? Nikki. Nikki. Laugh out loud. Are you finding it more <laughs> difficult to focus, yeah, Cheryl? Yeah, get a bit closer now. <laughs> 
Uh, Kieran saying that looks good. Yes, it does. Uh, Kaz is saying, yes, it's local bramble infused. Perfect. It sounds brilliant, actually, Kaz. Um, and wow, that amber sounds lush. Really, really lush. Really nice. uh, yeah, definitely. You know what? You never know when you can walk into uh, a place and, and uh, pick something up that's really rare that someone's just had sort of sitting on the back shelf somewhere. So just keep an eye out for it if you can. All right, here we go. Questions 10, 11, and 12 of this week's Whiskey Geek of the Week competition. So here we go, question 10. I'd like to know, what awards did McNair's Lumreek Peated 21-year-old, that's Lumreek Peated 21-year-old, win at this year's World Whiskey Awards? Actually, there are two awards that it won, so if you get either or both of them, you'll get a point for each. Or if you get one, you'll get one point. Okay, so what awards did McNair's Lum Reek PT21 win at this year's World Whiskey Awards? That was question number 10. Okay, so, uh, so question number 11 is, um, is uh, um, associated with number 10. I'm just actually going to give you a moment to get your answers for question number 10, because I know that uh, if I run on it, it tends to throw people off a little bit. Um, Barry, have I missed last week's winners? You mean in the competition? No, you haven't, because I didn't announce them. Oh, <laughs> so that's... What's that? Just useless tonight. Am I useless? <laughs> just snooker. Is it having me around? Do you think it's having Cheryl you? is just throwing I think me? it's distracting you. Barry, let me announce last week's winners. Sorry, we've done question number 10. Come back for question 11 and 12. Question, uh, the winners for last week... All right, here we go. How did I even uh, through really great cocktails tonight, though? Dave Chilton's saying, yeah. Really Definitely. Good. Really nice. Um, our winner of last week's whiskey competition, uh, I saw him join us at the beginning and, uh, and then never said anything about it, so I don't know whether he's still with us, but it's Richie Ward. Richie, great to see you. I know it's been a while. Uh, hopefully you are still there, but you won it. You won uh, last week's whiskey competition, so congratulations, Richie. Well done, Richie. Well done, Richie, and I uh, haven't seen this guy for a couple of weeks, actually, so I hope everything is good with you, with him. If you're watching this on uh, record or catch up, I hope you are well. Um, but our winner of last week's spot prize, which was for a box of whiskey jellies, uh, eat your drink whiskey club. So a box of let me see whiskey jellies in a box. What like jellies as in sweeties? Sweeties, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. uh, and that's Paul Slade. Paul Slade won that. So congratulations, Paul. I uh, hope all is well with you. Thank you, Barry, for reminding us. Really losing the plot this week for sure. Uh, let's go to question number eleven of our whiskey geek of the week. So the last question was what was about uh, McNair's Lum Reek. Uh, and this question is, what does Lang Me Ya Lum Reek literally mean? So what does it literally mean? And it's a phrase which is a traditional Scotch, uh, uh, Scottish wish. So what is that wish? So what does Lang Me Ya Lum Reek actually mean? And what is the actual wish uh, that is used in Scotland. May you live long, happy and drink lots of whiskey. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Uh, that was <laughs> that was my wife's Scottish accent. I'm sure you'll identify that. Well done. But I was born in Scotland. So she I was actually, actually born, born in Scotland. Born in Scotland. Uh, she was born in Scotland to say that. because her, her dad was in the Navy and he was uh, stationed in Rosyth in Scotland, and that's where uh, Cheryl was born, in I Scotland. Think we've had this conversation before with... Probably. We've Scotland. probably told you this before. I can't okay, uh, it is. congratulations, Richie. Richie, you still here? Yes, I'm still here. Congratulations, well done. Um, Richie, what are you doing? I always wonder what it's like to... Uh, thanks, not used to winning anything, right? <laughs> you doing any kind of jumping up and down? Because um, that would be good. Uh, be nice to know that. Always wonder what it feels like to have your name actually called out when you win these sort of things. So well done, Richie. Uh, I'll send you an official email tomorrow, so it'll be official tomorrow. Have you ever won anything? Uh, well, I've won cocktail competitions. Yeah, but apart from that. You mean like a prize in a... Yeah, like anything. Have you ever entered like a... Entered the prize giveaway and won. Entered the prize giveaway and won. No. No. <laughs> no, have you? No, I don't think I have. Okay. Maybe you should enter the Dream Whiskies thing. I'll see if I can fix it for you to win. <laughs> but you've obviously won competitions for cocktails. 
yeah, won cocktail competitions and when I was a kid, sporting events and kid like how old like kid from uh, when I was uh, eleven onwards. I 11. did athletics. Yeah, like local stuff, you know, school stuff. Oh, no, so we're not talking cocktails when you were 11. No, no. Oh, right. <laughs> I was telling you other things that I won. <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. It's just, just having a little right, private family thing going on here. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, last question. Question 12. Here we go. So which distillery has a series of whiskies called Seven Stars? where all the bottlings are named after different stars in the Ursa Major constellation. And in which country is that distillery based? So again, two points up for this one. So I'll repeat that for you. I'm uh, sure it's going to put them up, obviously, in a second. But which distillery has a series of whiskies called Seven Stars, where all the bottlings are named after different stars in the Ursa Major constellation? And in which country is that distillery based? Uh, Gary, you got some <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, Nikki. So our grandfather uh, once won, uh, you said 5K on a free scratch card. Wow. Nikki, it wasn't 5K, it was 50K. He won 50,000. It was a scratch card in the really? newspaper. Yeah, remember it well. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? Nikki and I... We didn't get any of that, <laughs> did we? Oh, did we? I don't know. Which did we? side? Mum's side. Yeah, mum's side. Yeah, he won 50k on that. And actually, he also won a, what is called a Super Yankee on the horses. He bet on the horses every day of his life. And uh, one day, his Super Yankee came in and he won a whole pile of money for that. Yeah, <laughs> good for him. Sweet. All right, so uh, thank you for that, Gary. By the way, got some long memory liking that. Uh, uh, we're going to come back. So we're going to come to these in a second. Yes. So we're going to find out who our whiskey geek of the week is shortly. Uh, I'm going to go back through, give you the answers. We're going to see who our winner is. But you've got three to choose from. You don't have to give me your winner yet. But what's your kind of overall? It's really difficult again. They're they're three fabulous, fabulous cocktails. Um, I know when we I'm started, just... you were kind of surprised with how how nice this one was. Yeah. Which I, is almost I... gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Sorry that's a good thing. Um, but like last week, I'm struggling. I'm really, really struggling okay. between the three of them. So I do know which one I'm going to go for. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Well, you've, you've got a couple of minutes to think about it, all okay. right? Okay. So while Cheryl makes her last decisions, uh, Nikki's saying, I did. What, you did? You got some of the dough. <laughs> wow, my sister got some of the cash from my grandfather. It's not bad. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Send me some! <laughs> All right, here we go, everyone. Let's find out who our Whiskey Geek of the Week is for this week. Um, what we do know is that our four-time winner, Kaz, has set the questions this week, so it can't be Kaz. But let's see uh, how Kaz has managed to sort of sort the week from the chaff. So here we go. Question number one, two, and three. They were all anagrams. These are the answers to the anagrams. One point each if you get them. Uh, Nikki's saying the ball, the ball. I'm not entirely sure. Which. Oh, I see. She's, oh, she's ball, voting ball. for this. Right, okay. Ball, ball. Um, so question number one was Manila Wives. Manila Wives, we were looking for Evan Williams. Evan Williams. If you've got Evan Williams, one point for you. Uh, question two was Cafe of Kinky, which is my favorite anagram of them all so far. Cafe of Kinky. Uh, that was Nika Coffee. Nika Coffee. Good one. Well, whiskey. Yeah, Nika, Japanese whiskey. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, not coffee as in coffee that you drink, but coffee as in double F-E-Y. I'll explain more like later. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, three. Uh, old Sherry Ale <laughs> uh, was Hellier's Road. Hellier's Road. Uh, quite a difficult one, that one, actually. Hellier's Road. So one point for each of those. Question four. Which distillery based in Tasmania celebrated its 25th anniversary That's last year? That's the devil year? one, isn't it? That's the devil one. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't the devil one, but it was Sullivan's Cove. Sullivan's Cove Distillery. A point if you got that one. Next question, number five. Which distillery makes a whiskey called Wild Weasel? Uh, and that is uh, Wilderans, or some people say Wilderans, but Wilderans, Wilderans. Uh, and if you got that, the answer is, in which country... 
is that distillery, Wilderans, Wilderans, uh, based? Which one? And the answer for that is Belgium. Belgium. Mm -hmm. So again, questions four, five, and six, if you've got those, they are a point each, one point each for those. On to question number seven. Want to know which distillery released a series of whiskies called Fragments of Scotland? We're looking for Springbank. Springbank. Uh, Springbank whiskies are fantastic, uh, in my humble opinion. Do we have any? No. No Springbank on the bar at the moment. It's not good enough. Cheryl's making a list of all the things we haven't got. Uh, we'll try and get them here next week. Or when she sobers up in the morning, I'm almost certain the answer will be no, we don't really need them here. You might just get it for Christmas, you never know. Spring bank for Christmas, that's what we like. Uh, question number eight. Which Scotch whiskey region does Alcantoshan come from? Alcantoshan. Uh, specifically, we said the three wood, but obviously they all come from the same region. Uh, we're looking for lowland, lowland whiskies. Lowland region. Uh, question number nine. Which whiskey won the world's best single malt? Okay, the world's best single malt at this year's World Whiskey Awards. And it is the Hakushu. The Hakushu. All right, so again, questions seven, eight, and nine. Uh, they're all worth a point each, so one point each if you get it. Uh, Dave, what are you saying? Cheryl <laughs> seems to have a nice glow tonight. You see, they're all the whiskey or my iPad. Uh, well, was, what is it? I was sunbathing. Yeah. I was sunbathing this afternoon. Or the I, sun. I caught a little bit too much sun yeah. this afternoon. That's what it is. Excellent. Yeah, I've, I've got a little bit of a glow. To be honest, I think you've just been called out. <laughs> All right, question 10. So there are actually two points up for grabs with question 10 here. Uh, so I want to know, what awards did McNair's Lumreek peated 21-year-old win at this year's World Whiskies Awards? Um, so there are two awards, one point for each. Uh, the first one was the world's best blended malt. Okay, so if you've got the world's best blended malt, you get a point. Uh, and also best scotch blended malt as well. Uh, so if you've got either of those, or both of those, it's a point each for those. So two points uh, potentially. And then the next question, uh, referring back to the name of the whiskey, Lumreek, is what does Lang Meyer Lumreek literally mean and uh, what traditional uh, Scottish wish is it? So what it literally means is long may your chimney smoke. Mm, long nice. may your chimney smoke. And if you got that, that's a point. But what that actually means is long and healthy life, which <gasps> <No>. you blabbed. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Cheryl blabbed that one to you. Okay, so, no, uh, so, <laughs> so long may your chimney smoke which translated into, from colloquial into actual English, means long and healthy life. Yeah, so a point a for each guess. of those. It, it was, was a good, good guess. guess. I think so. I think yeah. so. And it was fine. Yeah. It's fine. You, yeah. You're fine with it being fine. Your chimney smokes. Okay. So why not? <laughs> At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hope long may it <laughs> smoke. May, long may your chimney continue to smoke. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I will drink to that. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drink to that right now. Hmm. You're well blushing. done. <laughs> Am I blushing? <laughs> no, it's Dave's iPad. Oh, Dave's iPad. Definitely. <laughs> Question 12. Here we go. Question 12. Which distillery has a series of whiskies called Seven Stars, where all the bottlings are named after different stars in the Ursa Major constellation? And in which country is that distillery based? Again, two points up for grabs here. So all three of these last questions are all worth a potential two points. And this is uh, Spirit of Heaven or Heaven. Uh, Spirit of Heaven from Sweden. Okay, so we're looking for Spirit of Heaven or Heaven mm. uh, and, uh, and Sweden. So that's it. Uh, maximum marks you can get tonight out of our 12 questions are 15 points. So you know how this works. Put your scores in the comments. Highest score is our Whiskey Geek of the Week for this week. If there's a tie break, I'll have a tie break question for you. But now we need to find out who the winner of round two of our, our whiskey um, viewers competition or whiskey cocktail viewers competition is. We know that last week was Dave Chilton who is watching very carefully, uh, trying to find out who he's going to be up against in the final. And we are about to find out who that is. So we have three cocktails from three people. 
They are Cat Jam, uh, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure Cat, no, no, if you're no, still no, there. No, no, no I'm not going to no, say no, which no. one it is. No, because I know. No, I'm not going to say I'm which no, one it is. No, but I know one of them, and then I'll be able to work out. No, I'm not going to say what it is. Go on then. I'm pretty sure Cat Jam is for Catherine Jameson, right? Cat Jam, am I right? So Cat Jam is one of them. See, I wasn't okay. going to tell you anything. Um, uh, then we've got Jeff Canis, who's another one, and yeah. then we've also got Gary Cummins, who's the, the third one. Right, uh, okay. So at least two uh, of them are watching live, I think. Cat got a nine, by the way. Well done, Cat. She's Good done score. Well. Good score. So, you know, I said that I've made a decision. Yeah, you changed your mind? I changed my mind half a dozen times Whoa. all the time with, the, with, with those answers. I've changed my mind. I've gone from that one to 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 that, and back again. Like, okay. they, like last week, yeah. they are just. I would, yeah, I, I, yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly, I would struggle. I know where I would lean towards, but that's because of, uh, you know, my kind of style of cocktail so that I like. So let me dissect this a little Don't bit. Don't over dissect it. Okay, how long have we got? Just, just, just dissect it just shortly, okay, but, right. and, you know, because, you know, we, we struggle to hold them in here. So they were sitting there. This one is out. amazing because it's smooth, <laughs> it's chocolatey, and it's gorgeous. Okay. Kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Yay, yay, liking that. Yeah. <laughs> this one is creamy. Yeah. Okay, which I like. And okay. I love the cherry. Yeah. And, and the flavours are intense. Okay. A little bit like you. Okay. Intense. <laughs> <And> this one. <laughs> this okay. one um, with the cream topping um, is really really blended nicely flavors mm. and i really really like that so that one's great doesn't remind me of you at all okay just just so that you know thank you very much um, i think you gotta pick one i'm gonna go for the one big ball okay we have our winner um yeah yeah just, bruce, bruce is saying uh, they're just too good uh carl's got less oh you're coming in with your schools barry's got an eight tonight they're just too good. So let me tell you who the drinks really were from. Nice. Uh, so well, this, you know who this is. So yeah, I did blab a bit. So this one, uh, the winner is Jeff. Jeff isn't with us tonight, but Jeff, uh, congratulations. When you watch the uh, uh, the rerun, you'll know that you are in the final against Dave Chilton. So fantastic. I have to say, I would have gone for that one myself. Oh, would you? I would have. I would have done that. Um, but really, honestly, so we've had six great cocktails. This one here which was the Cinnamon Delight. This is from Gary. So Gary, brilliant job. When I saw it on paper, I thought it might be a little bit sort of simplistic, but actually it works brilliantly it's well. really good. Gary said, I'm pretty sure Gary, you said you make these for your wife and she loves those. So that's a great job there. Uh, and this is Cat Jam. And uh, Jam. Uh, yeah, and Cat. Uh, sorry, Cat. Sorry, Cat. But sorry, Gary. Really, actually, great cocktails. And uh, every time we do these sort of things, I have more and more ideas going around. So look, None of your efforts are going to waste. Um, you oh, know. Jeff's there. Where's Jeff? He's just gone. No, just well done, Jeff. Oh, Jeff's there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeff, you're in. Well done, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so what have we got here? Uh, some rude comments from my sister going for the ball shell. Gary, well done. Great cocktails, guys. They all look fab. Uh, Jeff, uh, you just in. You realise you won? Do you realise you won, Jeff? Congratulations, you're in the final. Uh, really love that, that old fashioned, uh, um, quite complex, you know, in terms of putting it together. But, but I don't normally like old fashioned. No, no. So that's, that's, that's what did it for me. I think Avril will probably agree it was the uh, Clark's maple syrup. Well, I think, I think Nikki agrees it was the one ball. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> uh, what else have we got to say here? Yeah, so the, the cocktails are great and, um, and I kind of want to keep hold of all your recipes as well because there's, there's definitely got to be an opportunity for us to try and put them together at some point. <clears throat> Excuse me. But for now, uh, we have two finalists. We have two finalists. We've got Dave Chilton from last week with his peach and honey, I seem to remember it's called. Mm -hmm. We've got Jeff Kennis from this week with his tabletop old fashioned. Next week, we've got Lubka, Charlie Oates. And let me tell you, we have a space, okay? Ooh. We have a space. It's not too late to get your recipes in. Come on, and, Nikki. And uh, uh, so take the opportunity to pop a recipe in. The winner of the final will get a really nice cocktail kit. So in terms of the prize, the prize is kind of good. But much more important than the cocktail kit, you will be our first official Dream Whiskies Viewers Cocktail Mixing Champion. And as far as I'm concerned, that is a proper mixology title. Um, Nikki, what are you saying? Thanks, fun time. Really enjoyed watching cocktails. Look great, Jeff. 
That's so what's the beef. I'm glad you liked it. My wife's favourite. I'm not surprised, Jim. Kaz hasn't put in a recipe yet. Kaz, you, you haven't put in a recipe. Do you want to get in? There you go. Come on, Kaz. You can do it. Kaz put in a recipe. And listen, by the way, if, if a whole load of you put in recipes, I might even do a fourth round. So, so get your recipes in. Um, and uh, this is sort of building into quite a, a, a coming together of mixological inspiration, actually. And uh, six amazing Me? cocktails. And, and an amazing judge as well. Right, what else do I need to tell you? Let's find out. At the moment, Cat Jam looks like she is our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Anyone got a better score than Cat? At the moment, Cat looks good with nine. Anyone beat nine? As... Actually, do you know what? I haven't seen any other scores yet. I've seen a few scores. Uh, Bruce, can we do a second? Yay. What do you mean by a second? Like a second prize? So, no, a second cocktail. Can you put in a second cocktail? That's what he's asking. Oh, is that what you're asking? Next week. Oh, let me think about that, Bruce. Uh, the only reason I say that is that if other people come in with recipes, want to give them a chance. But if it starts to stretch out, I might let you come in with a second. Um, but it doesn't stop you from being creative. I know you're pretty creative with the old mixology. So, uh, you, I mean, you can send them in anyway. Bruce, you know, I, I might end up getting my arm twisted. So, what should I say? Just go for it. Go, Just for, go it. for it. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, if I was playing... Uh, listen, Michael, the door's open. I'm happy for you to come back in. I know that you annexed yourself, um, but I'm happy for you to come back in. Uh, even, maybe, I'll tell you what, I've got an idea. Maybe instead of getting people like Kaz and Michael out of the competition because they are so consistently uh, knowledgeable... Maybe we should put the multiple champions on some kind of, um, uh, like a... a, a like leaderboard. No, 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 no. In, in golf, you have a handicap, right? Maybe we'll, we'll give the, the, the better scorers a handicap. Because I want you guys to play. And then maybe that, that'll be more fun. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play around with that. But what do you think, Michael, Kaz? Handicaps? So once you start winning multiple titles, we'll put you on handicaps, making it more difficult for you to win. Dave Chilton, just one question for the final. Do we make a new cocktail or do you use the first one? No. New cocktail? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. New cocktail. No, we're going to... I'm going to work out the rules for the final. I'll work out the rules for the final. New cocktail. There's no point in doing a new cocktail because actually... Because it was their original cocktail that got them through. So that's what we're competing against. Each other. I think it's going to be the same one. We'll just change Let's the way that we do Let's it. Let's have a vote, guys. No votes. Look, yeah, my wife how, is... You know how it works with me. Vote. She wants new one or, or the same one. By the way, Kaz, yes, fine with me. Okay, good. Kaz, liking that, liking the idea of, uh, of the, um, uh, the handicap. I'll work out how that works, but maybe that can get Michael in as well. All right, uh, next week's prize for our spot prize. Not going to go through the questions for that, but if you remember, you know that we have a little spot prize thing. Uh, I have a trick memory. That's my handicap. Uh, uh, do you, are you uh, Michael, are you one of these guys with you know, unbelievable sort of photographic memory? Just hold on to information. Um, uh, this is our prize, by the way, our spot prize. Oh, let's get that. What have I done there? Let's get rid of the keyboard. Our spot prize. So our spot prize is this, and it's uh, Psycho Juice. And Psycho Juice is an incredible ghost pepper sauce. If you're talking about hot pepper sauces, this is a proper, serious, blow your head into next door's yard a uh, uh, hot pepper sauce. Amazing for making a ghost margarita. Uh, actually amazing for making really hot, powerful Bloody Marys. If you are into your drinks, I mean, obviously you can put this all over your food, but the reason why I've given it away is that it is great in cocktails if you like a real bite. And, and, and even if you don't like a real punch, you can use this in such small quantity that it gives flavor. Ghost peppers, by the way, taste gorgeous. So that is our prize. The questions are all on our website as usual for our members. You know how it works. Just get over there and answer the questions and we'll put you into a draw. Paul won that last week. Last few comments before we shut down. Before you get outvoted. Uh, before I get... It's Definitely just like a complete... Yeah, you know what's going on here? Yeah, but Dave makes a really good point. This is a mutiny. Oh, well, I haven't seen Dave's point. Great show tonight, says Gary. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, Gary. Really appreciate it. I may wait for the next round of this. I have one in mind, but it has something in it that you probably can't get. Okay, I'm not even going to ask what that is, Bruce. Uh, Dave, that means Cheryl knows who has made each one. That's okay. true. He makes a really good point. That is a good point. All right. Valid point. 
uh, notwithstanding the fact that I gave it away this evening anyway, but nevertheless, yeah. um, no, that is a good point. All right, we'll give it some thought. Cheryl and I will actually took it over, and we'll give it some thought and uh, explain in next yeah. week's round how the final will work. But delighted that Dave is there. Absolutely thrilled for Jeff getting through to the final as well. Congratulations to everyone that sent in recipes, not just this week, but last week, and the guys that are already in for next week as well. Um, listen, hope you all stay well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the broadcast this evening. You know how it works. Stick with us. If you want to become a member and you're not, please go over and enroll. It helps us to do what we do every week. Um, but listen, until this time next week, stay well, stay safe uh, from Cheryl and I. Good night. See you next week. Bye. Bye.